cannot study the sun in isolation. The influence of its power throughout the solar system it created is persuasive and dominating. The heliosphere is an immense magnetic bubble extending beyond the orbit of Pluto. It contains the solar wind of high and low speed energetic particles and plasma that originate at the surface of the sun. After traveling for 36 years and 19 billion kilometers, the Voyager 1 spacecraft has reached the edge of this heliosphere. Voyager 1 has left the bubble around the sun and entered interstellar space, the space between stars. There, it still senses the shock waves emitted by the sun, which sound like this. To understand this source of power and its influences, scientists conduct observations from the ground and in space, where a flotilla of satellites trains sophisticated sensors upon the sun and the space weather it creates. Space weather is the field that studies how what's going on on the sun affects us here on the Earth in our near space environment and on the space environment on other planets. The effects of space weather are so complicated because we have to understand what's going on at the sun as well as all that stuff traveling through interplanetary space, how that affects us here on the Earth and throughout the heliosphere, that we need an entire fleet of instruments to look at these various effects. Um, it's basically a system science, so you understand one part of it in order to understand the other part of it, and you have to put that whole puzzle together to understand the full effects of space weather. GOES-P is an ongoing series of Earth observation satellites that happen to keep a constant eye on the sun, monitoring this space weather. So when the spacecraft's sitting in space, um, it's looking down at the Earth and it stays stationary like this. But this solar array out here moves and tracks the sun. So that way, it's always looking at the sun and can take a scan every minute. The sun's outer atmosphere is constantly being heated up by the solar surface. And this causes particles from the sun's atmosphere to stream away constantly. These streaming particles, which are filling our entire solar system, are called the solar wind. Different phenomenon from uh, the sun uh, is constantly bombarding the Earth. Although you might not know it, the solar weather affects you every day down here as well. Uh, not only just astronauts, it, it affects uh, people on Earth. The latest generation of GOES satellite is the GOES-R, soon to be launched into orbit. Other low-Earth orbiting platforms include ESA's microsatellite Proba-2, testing new technology, and PICA, sponsored by CNES, the French space agency. Hinode is the Japanese word for sunrise. It is a joint mission between JAXA, NASA and ESA to study the sun's magnetic cycles. Its close-up study has revealed the complex granular textures of the sun's surface and insights into solar flares. A solar flare is a huge release of energy um, that converts the magnetic energy of the sun into heat, into light, it accelerates particles, and can really heat up the plasma in order of minutes to over 60 million Kelvin. For a large eruption, the sun produces a flash of light, which we call the solar flare. It also produces a huge ball of material traveling away from the sun we call the coronal mass ejection. And both of those phenomena can accelerate subatomic particles, which we call solar energetic particles. These three things together make up a solar storm.